Stephen, you did some investigative research over the weekend, and I kind of want to get into this. It's up on ontapsportsnet.com. Article is titled Winners and Losers, How the White Sox Moving to the South Loop Would Impact Fans. We're all about the fan perspective here, Stephen. What did you find out? Listen, everyone knows that I am a man by the people, for the people, of the people. The My sources are indicating, and, and listen, obviously Bruce Levine, you know, commented on this on the weekend, and I was actually uh, listening to him as he was on uh, Mullane Haw yesterday morning as I was driving into the city, um, you know, basically saying that this thing, if it happens, will come together very quickly. And then he followed it up by saying two weeks or a month. That's a very short time frame right there. And then you see tweets and reports of the Bridgeport alderwoman basically saying that she has seen some of the specifics of the deal and that it is a tremendous deal for the White Sox. That to me is almost resigning herself to the fact that they are going to leave. I, I find it fascinating that an older woman would make that kind of a comment, basically saying that this deal is basically too good to pass up. She needs I, to, to leave our current area here and go to a, another region of the city, another portion of the city. Um, to me, that makes it almost seem like it's fait accompli. Now, obviously, city of Chicago, there's a lot of greasing of the wheel that has to go on in order for this thing to get across the finish line. But those two factors right there make it think, make it seem as though this thing has legs more than we even initially thought a little over a week ago when this first leaked out. Yeah, I saw those comments as well. I was I was a bit surprised. Normally, it's the alderman's job to sort of keep – uh, their their constituents within their neighborhood happy and and I think that you know as we start to dissect this there's going to be a couple of different things here that it's going to be um, different businesses that are going to be affected and impacted uh, by this potential White Sox move uh, Stephen as uh, as some of the viewers on here uh, you didn't see this comment come up yet uh, Ken Wells on an iPhone he said it looks like Stephen's wearing a Cleveland shirt how is this um, a Cleveland shirt. I, I'm not sure, Steve, but uh, Kenneth might need his eye checks. We, we know so. Kenneth is not what anyone would confuse for a smart individual. Now he's apparently blind. Well, you know, these are interesting developments that we're, we're learning here live on air. But the the comments about, you know, it being a tremendous deal for, for the Chicago White Sox, I'm not too uh, – involved in, in knowing what the specifics are of this potential deal. Steven, do you have any light that you can shed on this in terms of how this potentially gets paid for here? Because if we rewind the tape just a little bit um, back through the season, we also had rumblings of, you know, Jerry Reinstorf meeting with the mayor of Nashville. Uh, you heard about potential suburban moves. Um, everything was sort of up in the air. I think the 78 development project, was also a, you know, just tossed around rumor. But now that you get some some clarity here that the Sox are seriously in talks with uh, the city of Chicago on this, um, th this seems to be the location they've set their their sights on. How are we going to fund this? What What's going to be tremendous about this deal? Well, the interesting thing from a funding standpoint that Bruce commented on apparently over the weekend and Monday as well was that the – Tax impact for residents in the city of Chicago, County of Crook, state of Illinois, would be no different than the current deal. So the funding mechanism was always going to be the biggest question of this. Um, we've had this discussion. I know you were very much um, panicking, I, I would almost say, when these leaks and these rumors about Nashville first came out and everything. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big Nashville guy, but I, I just didn't want to see my socks leave. You know, I and, and I and I can understand that. And the funding mechanism was always going to be the biggest hurdle here. But I think the fact that this is part of a larger development, there has to be some sort of funding machinations going on here that is tying the stadium construction and the surrounding development around it together that is going to minimize that 
tax impact on residents, like I said, in the city of Chicago, County of Cook, state of Illinois. Um, we don't have a ton of specifics on it at this point here. Um, and one other thing that Bruce Levine, you know, commented on and he went out of his way to really say was that since 1920, there have only been two new stadiums built in the city of Chicago. And both times, the bane of our existence, Jerry Reiser is the man who was responsible for getting those stadiums built. Obviously with uh, New Comiskey Park and then the United Center. So he's he's got experience doing this. I, I think it would be kind of hilarious in a way if the Sox were able to get a new stadium plan finalized before that sorry ass football team could even get one done. That would be hilarious to me. It would. And, you know, that's an interesting point that you bring up here that Jerry Reinsdorf's the only man in this city that's been able to pull off these developments. Um, it, it speaks to some of the historic stadiums in, in the city, I guess, Steve, but um, you know, there, there's something to be said for, um, you know, this entire project in itself here, because this is this is a lot different. And you touched on it in your article. This isn't the same run of the mill Jerry Reinsdorf 35th and Shield Stadium. There's been renderings that have leaked out. Um, I'm pretty sure if you're tuning into the show, you can find them somewhere online. They're all over the place. Um, it looks cool, Steve. It, it looks like uh, a place that you would be proud to call home if you're a White Sox fan. Um, the, the big part in question to this is, is this thing going to face the city? I think the overwhelming answer to that is going to be yes. Have skyline views that everybody's been clamoring for for years. Um, but it's also going to change sort of the dynamic uh, as a White Sox fan who's been going to 35th and Shields their entire life of what the ballpark experience is going to be. Not only from the in-park experience, because we don't exactly know how they're going to design the, the stadium, the stands, all that. But I think for you and I, one thing that you we've discussed pretty much every day since this news has broken is the impact it's going to have on our journey to and from the ballpark itself. And Steve, I think that's a, a good place for you to jump off as somebody who's coming in from Northwest Indiana. Um, you know, how do you feel about this personally? Okay, so two things I, I want to touch first on the stadium renderings that got leaked out first and, and a couple of observations that I have made from this here. Um, you know, if you look at the renderings of it, you've obviously got it, you know, alongside the river there. So you've got some potential to have views of the skyline and depending on the orientation of it, um, you know, you could potentially set something up similar to Oracle Park in San Francisco, where you could have balls getting hit into the Chicago River, people in kayaks and boats in the summertime, um, because everybody in Chicago likes to say, I'm on a boat, and then they can go chasing after home run balls. Um, so that would be certainly very unique. And I mentioned this in, in my piece here. If done correctly, this stadium would have the opportunity to be the envy of baseball from in a lot of pers perspectives um the stadium design itself there's two things that, that i noticed about it first if you really zoom in on it you can see that there's a multi-deck structure in the outfield there and what looks like right field um which kind of you know you could almost say harkens back to old comiskey park with it um that's something that i i find kind of appealing when the current ballpark right now was going through some of the renovation talks and you can see there was an idea for a second deck in right field at the current ballpark right now. And that would have certainly made things different aesthetically. My biggest gripe, and this is something that I've noticed about pretty much all the stadiums that have opened up, I would say, in the last 10 to 14 years, really kind of starting with um, that stadium up in uh, Canada South there and and just all the various ballparks, even you know the new one that my barbs have moved into uh, down in the ATL is having five different levels to these ballparks, it drives me absolutely insane. One thing that I would love to see them do is get back old school style, similar to old Comiskey Park, do two decks. 
I've retweeted a thread from Travis Sawchick, who's uh, written at Fangraphs and various other publications, talking about the ways that they could really do this thing and do this thing right by bringing fans and bringing it closer to the field. And that's something I would really like to see them do. The renderings that we have out there right now don't look as though they're going to do that. Renderings can change. You know, this could just be a first draft. Who knows? So we'll see what happens with that. That's just my take on, on this. I knew that was going to be a sticking point for you. You've brought this up numerous times um, on various different uh, shows that we've done, um, especially talking back to uh, when we did our show with uh, Last Comiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, that was something that was talked about heavily. Um, so I know that's on your wish list, Stephen. Uh, hopefully you get that. I've never been in a ballpark that's, that's had that um, architecture. So I can't say that I've had the privilege of – sitting in an upper deck that's super close to um, the, the field in that manner. But uh, let's let's hope that maybe maybe they do something with that because I've heard a lot of good things.